Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up. Accesibilidad para Apple TV, más aplicaciones de notificación, todo eso y más en iOS hoy. On iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple product is worth at gazelle.com. See, you probably want to see that. Translation apps for every occasion today on iOS Today. Mm -hmm. I hope we weren't saying something really horrible. I don't think we were. That's the problem with translation apps. You never know. So I just came back from a, a long trip to uh, the Netherlands. I don't speak Dutch. To Germany. I don't speak German. To Austria. I don't speak Australian. And then to Turkey. No, uh, Hungary. And I don't speak Hungarian. So I was really kind of at sea. Actually, I wasn't at sea because I was on a riverboat. But I did use the translation apps, and they were great. So if you can't speak to somebody in a foreign land, these translation apps have gotten better and better. We're going to show those on iOS today, plus a lot more. Yes, we I'm do. Leo Laporte. I am Megan Maroney. And uh, we do iOS today now is iPad, iPhone, and Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. I spoke today uh, on Sunday uh, at Twit to a German family came to visit, oh. Uli and her uh, husband, Heinke. Did you use your app to translate I, the entire they thing? They actually, and this is the sad state of affairs in the world, they spoke perfect English. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I did ask, you know, what do you watch? And Uli says, I watch iOS today. So oh. she's watching right now. Hi, Uli. Great. Well, Welcome. We translate some things in German. Yeah, she would understand the show. No, her English is great. And that's one of the sad things is that as you travel around in a lot of countries, people do speak English very well. In right. Scandinavia, in much of Europe, they speak English very well. But still, uh, it's nice if you can speak to somebody in their own language. And these translation apps are kind of like that holy grail of translation, the babel fish you put in your ear and you speak your language, they speak their language and everybody understands everybody. Right. And so, they're getting better and better just with so much information out there. So Microsoft just came out with theirs. It's Microsoft Translate. Uh, it's got an iPad app. This is just just for iPhone, but you know, you can this is kind of what iPhone apps look like on the iPhone. IPad. Yeah, we like they're to show them on the iPad because they're big. Um, yeah. But, uh, and they have an Apple Watch app, oh, which nice. I love. So I'll show you that too. So you said they do have an iPad app. This, this, no, this, that's, not that's the iPad. That's the iPhone. They have an iPhone app for yeah. the. So it's really for mo mobile people. Yeah, like, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you don't have to hold an iPad up. The me. Apple Watch, so you can you know, translate that. to French. Now, um, can you speak to it? You can. Mm -hmm. It's as many. Where is the bathroom? Oh, it got everything. Mm -hmm. That's always the problem with dictation. It's going to get me too now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, maybe. Or it's just going to give up. Or we could say done because we're done. <laughs> it might take a while. <laughs> oh, Lord. And now the Spanish. <laughs> it's thinking. Now, one thing that I found is that. Oh, there it is. Hey. You had to slide it over. It's so. como mucho donde esta baño. You got the middle part is right. Donde esta la baño. So, yeah, use the Just digital ignore crown. the rest. Oh, that's it's nice. Me. Yeah, so it doesn't that was pretty speak. fast. It doesn't speak back, but it does show the text. Right. And if you are the type like me who gets a little embarrassed talking into your watch, I mean, once I really become an international spy, I definitely will talk into my watch all the time, but I'm yeah. not there yet. No. Uh, you can use your phone, you can type, and then you can pin it. And then those appear on your watch, so that if you're just like, "Oh, where's the bathroom? I need Certain to know." Certain things you look, ask a lot. Yeah, then you yeah. can just look on your watch, and all of your pinned translations are there, and you can just see them. In so this is the Microsoft. What's it called? Microsoft Translate? Translator. Yeah. Okay. And it is free. Nice. Um, and it speaks a lot of languages. It does. It, looks it, like. it does 50 languages, which is not as many as some, including right. the one that you uh, have. So it's um, you can speak. You can. As long type. as it speaks the language you need, it doesn't really matter how many languages it speaks. Right. And I love it that you can use it on the watch. That's and the really thing great. that we were showing before, I don't know if you can show, is that you know you can hold it up like this and just hold it up and show it to someone. Right. You know, it's like if you want to say where is the bathroom, then you know you will hold it up and say. Mm. 
This, by the way, has gotten better and better as dictation has gotten better and better uh, on these services. And the, I don't know if you've noticed, but it really has the transcriptions of voicemail, things like that. Right. They really have improved. Both Microsoft and Google are getting better, and, and Apple too. Is there a, a way to do this with Siri? I don't know. That's a good question. You think try. Siri would speak foreign languages? Let's just try. Can you translate to Spanish? <laughs> I love how people talk. I'm afraid I can't translate things for you, Megan. But I can search the web if you like. Thank you. And so polite. It is, it is helpful. And I, I like it that you have a male Siri. I do. Do mm -hmm. you call him sir? No. He calls me ma'am. That's why I have the <laughs> He's my servant. He's my wow. actual assistant. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> let me show you on the, um, the iPhone app, which is playing on my iPad. Um, you can click Spanish, and then, then you can see all of the different languages. Nice. Uh, so Chinese simplified, Chinese traditional, Greek, Haitian, Creole, a bunch. We would be remiss if we didn't show uh, Google Translate. It's kind of interesting because Google actually put some of the capabilities of Google Translate, like simultaneous translation, into the iOS version before they put it into their own Android operating system. So don't fear if you're using an iPhone or an iPad. Google Translate is really good. And it has some interesting features here I'll show you here. Uh, we'll go back uh, to the home page. It has three different ways you can translate stuff. You can show a picture. You can speak to it. And by the way, and I'll show in a bit, there's a simultaneous translation feature and you can type to it and it'll give you text back let's start with the picture they bought a little while ago they bought a company uh, that did this exact thing I have a Spanish sign thank you uh, Jason Cleanthus who printed this out for me and the idea is you're in um, I'm gonna first of all change the language to Spanish you're in um, a, a foreign country one of the th it's one thing to try to speak to a, a person it's another thing entirely to uh, try to speak to a sign. They generally don't <laughs> respond. So you're really kind of out of luck unless you can ask a person, uh, does that sign say don't come in this place or whatever? You These, could type it out, but that you would could, be hard. You could type it. This is really handy. So I'm, I've changed to Spanish to English. This is a Spanish sign. And look at that. Look at that. I mean, no, I mean, Whoa, I gotta show you the Spanish. That is amazing. The other thing that's really cool about this is it does it in the same typeface. It actually looks like the sign. So there's the Spanish and property Municipal of the Angels. Okay, Los Angeles is the Angels. But you get enough, right? No transfer, no park, no pull rubbish. I think they probably mean place rubbish. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Rape. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not purpose. Perfect. Rapists Neither will be punished we. of agreement with the law. I don't think that's... It's violators, not... Anyway. Um, so it's doing the best well, it can. Well, hopefully that's also true. I, I do hope it's true. Uh, it's probably not the translation you were looking for, and I love it that it's Municipal of the Angels instead of City of Los Angeles. But I, you got to you got to admit that that's impressive. It is. It's not as good, I admit, as I had hoped it would be. Let's see if we can figure out. This one's an important one. You really don't want to. What does Pelegro mean? Does that mean come on in? Yeah. Go does, swimming. Just Put go swimming. Suit. It's going to be a beautiful day. Let's let's go see what Pelegro means. It means danger. Oh. Electrical lines up. Arriba. You see how it does that? And what's amazing is it matches. What? I'm not holding it very steadily. Let me let me hold That's it more That's really steadily. fascinating. Keep it saying matches the sign. Water. Danger. Lines electrical up. Is that not impressive? That is. The, oh, is we it are saying in, foot locker? We're in real trouble as humans. We yeah, because really the are. computers really are smarter There's than we are. So much better. You know, but let me show you. Okay, and the other way, of course, is you could type it. But the, the one that I want to show you is the same one you were showing on the Microsoft thing. This is Google Translate. Can we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into Chinese here though, because uh, I'll show you all the languages. I mean, it's a, it's a whole heck of a lot of uh, world languages, but capabilities vary. Chinese, it does speak out loud. It doesn't speak all languages out loud. If I had a Chinese speaker, is Tony here? Tony, are you here? I could try I could this. I can learn Chinese real quick. Um, let, me, let me just try this. So one thing it does is it automatically understands which language is speaking, mm. okay? Tony? We're gonna we're gonna go get him. Uh, Tony Wang, who's one of our oldest, longest employees, uh, is uh, is from uh, t uh, China. Actually, he's from Thailand, Thai mm -hmm. Tw Taiwan. Taiwan. <laughs> and uh, but he speaks uh, Mandarin, and uh, we're gonna see how he does in uh, translating it here. All right, Tony, are you ready now? Uh, I'll say something to you in English, and I'm hoping it will say it in uh, Chinese to you. And you tell us how good this translation is. Hi, I'm a stranger around here. I'm wondering where I can find the art museum. Hi, I'm a stranger around here. I'm wondering where I can find the art museum. Hi, I'm a stranger around here. I'm wondering where I can find the art museum. Hi, I'm a stranger around here. I'm wondering where I can find the art museum. Hi, I'm a st
这里，我想知道在哪里可以找到的艺术博物馆。我也不知道。I do not know. <笑> You're kind of a loser, aren't you? 你是怎样的一个失败者，都不是你的。是我爸爸妈妈的错。This is going downhill fast. It's my mom and dad's fault. So, how was the translation? Was it pretty good? It was perfect. It was perfect. Wow, it was perfect. What's amazing is Chinese is one of those languages where you know, with Spanish and French, you can kind of know if it's correct. But with Chinese,、uh, English speakers have no idea if they're getting it on the mark. And I imagine it's the same thing with Chinese speakers. Right. So the fact that we could have a conversation、uh, and it would translate that to you. Let me just play that back because I know you don't speak English. <laughs> It's thinking. It's pretty fast, though. But that was a lot of speech. It's processing.、Uh, it didn't. It didn't say it out loud. What it translated was: So Obama wants to talk to it's my mom and dad's fault. So how's the translation? It was pretty good. It was perfect. It was perfect. What's amazing is China. It got it pretty well. So I. Do you think this would be useful as a tourist, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. We've tried this with a number of languages, and it is surprisingly accurate.、Mm -hmm. But there is that little lag and that little weird discomfort where you go and you say something, and then they listen. Yeah.、Um, but I have to say, I it's it is as a technology demonstration, it's pretty impressive. That's that's Google Translate.、Um, and did you have another one? I had another one, but I mean, when, now that I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I'm thinking really Microsoft and Google are dominating this market. You know why? Because they're creating speech dictation engines,、yeah. Cortana, Google Now. That's why I thought Apple might be a player in this game. Maybe、yeah. they just haven't gotten around、you、to putting in the translation.、That. Yeah, I translate was one of the popular ones before these came out,、um, and this is the translation is done by Microsoft. So it's the same.、Um, yeah, and this app was it's it's not the other two are free. This is four ninety nine for for the one, or you have to deal with the ads. So、um, stick so, with Google Translate yeah, or Microsoft. Yeah, I think unless you、um, really don't want to use any Google products in your life or any Microsoft、yeah. products in your life, then try I Translate. Um, you can try the free version, and if you love it, but it doesn't really do anything that、uh, the other ones don't do. It also offers an Apple Watch app, so like、We're、as、so、the Microsoft one does. So close to the science fiction future. We really. That's、are. amazing. Yeah, no, unfortunately, no. Uh, Apple Watch interface yet for Google Translate? Yeah, there aren't very many Google、It's, apps on the watch. Yeah, I don't know why. Google News yeah, is yeah. okay. I like. I use that. One thing though,、uh, it's not always a, an international language that we want to speak. Sometimes it's the language of the streets,、mm -hmm. the argot of the people.、Mm -hmm. And for that, I love Genius. Do you know about Genius? Yes. We used to be Rap, Rap Genius, genius.、Uh, and it's your guide to the meaning of lyrics, poetry. And prose, so it has. It started with rap lyrics, so you could get annotated rap lyrics. What's interesting to this、uh, is it's gone well beyond this. So,、uh, for instance, well, let's just. Uh, uh, should we pick one and, and see? I yes, don't know. we should. Oh, I didn't sign up on this one. Didn't a,、um, a reporter from NPR go well, to Genius? Well, this is what's interesting about this.、Um, the at the GOP debates on Fox. Uh, they were at, the Washington Post was asking people to annotate the transcript of the speech using Genius, so you can do that as well. You can take and Jeff Jarvis uses it to annotate articles,、mm. so you can actually annotate any text.、Um, let's see, what is a what is something that I don't really understand? How the, about the, I can't feel my face by the weekend? Yeah, I, that was there. Yeah, you, do you can do you understand that? Let's、no. see. Let's see what that what the what the kids so I can have the video playing. This might not be as appropriate, but I've listened to this song with my kids in the car. Okay, well it must be okay. So you got the got the music there. Oh, oh! I should have signed up before we started doing this.、Um, you got the music there, and then you see the verses. And when it's highlighted like this, you can tap it, and it will have annotations. Now this is crowdsourced,、mm -hmm. so you see Tyrant, Chihuahua Zero, and two others. And this is like Cliff Notes. For songs. For songs. Yeah.、Uh, I just I feel like this is kind of amazing. Plus links to other songs, which makes it a great way to kind of discover stuff. So、uh, I, I'm sorry about that. I really have to、uh, sign up so we don't get this. You can use it on the web, by the way, without signing up, and that's mostly where I use this. But I this is a translator for the language of the streets. It started with rap music, which sometimes is a little opaque. To people、uh, like me, but、uh, it it go like what does that mean exactly? So,、uh, the, but it goes much deeper now. In fact, it can be annotating any kind of text at all. So、uh, I I love Genius. It is free. It is available on、uh, this is an iPhone app, but as you can see, it works just fine on the iPad. 
And it's hours of endless fun. Plus, once I sign up, I'll be able to play this song while I'm looking at the annotations. It's really, I mean, if, if you think of uh, rap as kind of the poetry of the streets, which I think it is, uh, this is kind of a wonderful way to understand it a little bit better so you know what the kids are talking about. And Genius is a website or an app? It's both. Okay. And it's free. And it's free. Genius the app is what I was just showing you. Right. Yeah. Got it. it used to be Rap Genius, so if you Google Rap Genius, you'll find it pretty okay. dark. Or you can find it on our website at twit.tv. This app, iOS absolutely. Today. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can email us at iOS today at twit.tv. If you have another translator app that is better than these that you use all the time, uh, let us know and you it's, can send that via email. It's really what the promise was of computing was that we'd be able to speak to one another. This barrier, artificial barrier of, of language would go away. Mm -hmm. Love it. You can also call us 757-504-IPAD uh, with all your tips or your questions. And you can join our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash iOS today. I think my uh, rap genius handle should be Leo Lenizzle. Mm, you think? Good. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with something that's so, street. Yeah, street. Leo Lenizzle, I like that. Yeah, I like, don't think it means what I think it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, it's already taken. Uh, uh, somebody's already taken my email, which means I already have an account. Of course I have an account. I just don't remember my password. Uh, I'll, I'll come we up with it. We need a nap for that. Yeah. I need a nap for that is what I need. Uh, let's take a break and talk about uh, how people can get ready for the new iPhone and the new iPad. Re reportedly due soon. I know, very soon. September 9th. What, 9th? Nice. Okay. That's nice. a Wednesday. In fact, would you be willing to help anchor our coverage? Yes, I, I would. I won't be in town. What? I'm going is to New York. Is that what you were talking about this morning? I, have, I am going to, for the first time in my entire life, it's miss an Apple here. event. Yeah. I I'll be in New York City. I won't miss that. I'll be there. Maybe I'll if you wherever. want, I can go to the Apple store on Fifth Avenue. I can just stand in front and go, I'm out here in front of the Apple store. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> and we'll just do it that way. Yeah, I think that I'm really excited about the um, new iPhones, but also they're not going to be so radically different that you could have the opportunity to get an old one for people like us that are going to get the new one anyway, either way. This is an important point. When new ones come out, you often can get a better deal on the old ones. If you go to Gazelle, here's my tip, power tip. Okay. Uh, go to gazelle.com, our sponsor, right now, and get a quote for all your existing stuff. Because you may find it, there's a lot of new phones coming out. IFA's in Berlin next week. Uh, of course, there are new Motorola phones, new Samsung phones. There are new phones from OnePlus. So y you, whether you want them or not, you're going to watch our reviews, get an idea of what you want. You should go right now to gazelle.com and get a quote on your stuff. And here's why. Your quote is guaranteed for 30 days. You don't have to sell it immediately. It's not a commitment to sell. It's just a commitment from Gazelle to you that they will pay that amount for your device. Now you have 30 days to decide. Wait and see what is good, what's cool. Wait and see what the iPhone does. If you say, you know, I'm looking at that new iPhone. I don't need it. Or maybe now is the time to upgrade. I have an old 4S, sell it to Gazelle, get the new 5C or whatever, 6C mm -hmm. or S or whatever they call it. That would be, that would be another thing that you could do. So, but, this, but it all starts with a trip to Gazelle, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E com to get your quote. Now, if you do decide to sell, and yeah, as I said, you have 30 days, you have a checkout, they'll send you a box, they pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck, turn it around fast, they'll wipe the data if you forget to, and they'll send you a check, a PayPal credit, or an Amazon gift card to cover the amount they quoted you as much as 30 days ago. You can also go there, and I think this is what you were, where you were going, and buy stuff. So they don't currently have the next iPhone, obviously. But we might not even need the you next iPhone. You may not iPhone. want the next iPhone. You may say, you know, I'd be very happy with an iPhone 6. I was waiting, but there's no reason. You can get a great deal on an iPhone 6 or a Samsung device or a tablet at gazelle.com. They sell used phones. Now, some of the phones, there's different qualities. There's some that are certified like new. There's some certified... Uh, slightly worn. Um, those are going to give you great savings. In every respect, anything that they sell you is guaranteed to work. They go through a rigorous 30-point inspection, make sure everything is fully functional. The screen's not scratched. There's no, you know, I mean, it's totally functional. Um, and, and by the way, you also have 30 days if it doesn't work exactly like you want, or even if you change your mind, you have 30 days, a risk-free return policy. So Gazelle is great. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, both to sell and to buy. It's the smart way. Sell your gadgets and buy new gadgets the fast and simple way at Gazelle. Yeah, it's great for parents, too. Because, you know, you're looking through them like, who wants a, an iPhone 4 Kids. at 4? A kid 
wants an iPhone. A kid. For. It's a great solution because I mean, kids are getting phones younger and younger, and you do not want to hand over a seven hundred dollar device no. to your child. No. Oh my gosh. Not at all. The last thing you'd want to do. Yes. But on the other hand, you know, it's so funny. I was walking by the barber shop downtown. You know, the one on the boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago, and there was the cutest little kid in the barber chair. And he, had the, he was like, and the barber was working on his hair. And I thought, I, I, I stepped in, I said, take, take a picture, it's so cute. I won't show you the picture to protect its privacy, but it was so cute. And I said, oh, you just really, I said, I am sorry, you're not having any fun at all, are you? He said, what do you mean? I, no, I'm having a great time. I'm listening to audible.com, it's Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And he, <laughs> he shows me his iPod touch, or it might have been an old iPhone. Oh, I didn't look fun. real closely, and there's the Diary even... of a Wimpy Kid. That's get great, kid, yeah. kids listening to books they, or reading books or reading books. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to get them one of these. It's yes. great. Um, so I have a, a pick. Uh, did you know that Serenity Caldwell has a new iBook? I do, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, absolutely going to read this okay, because well, it helps me with a thing I'm not having much luck with. Apple Music. So if you signed up for Apple Music right away, if you signed up for the free trial, you're probably running out of time. I you're think puzzled. I have September. 30th is my when mine runs out. Um, so July maybe you're 29th deciding... to August 29th. Wasn't it the end? Oh, it was the end of June. It was the end of June. Yes, end of June. June, so it's July, August, end of September. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe you're trying to decide: Do you want to pay the 9.99 a month, or do you want to use Spotify, or do you not even need it at all? Do you find that like they've just in given you this idea that you need to listen to music and you don't? Maybe you just don't know how to use it. So it's Apple Music, the ultimate guide that costs 4.99. And iBook is great. I don't know if you've read a lot of iBooks, but it's really easy to just swipe through and link and go to new um, places in the book. You can do it on your i pad too so let's get off that translate so and the folks sing. at iMore and you've seen them of course on this show and on uh, Mac Break Weekly the folks at iMore really are good at explaining how stuff works as Serenity called well it's not just Serenity but it's the other editor as well has done she's done a whole series on iMore and how to get a a Apple Music working like you want this book is a must-have and it's what it's, it's $4 cheap $4.99 $4.99 and uh, the best thing about it is um, as it as Apple Music gets updates the book will get updates too they're gonna oh that's in. neat yeah so it's not like that's a kind book of a cool you feature your, yeah you're not gonna yeah. put it on your bookshelf and think, oh, I don't need that anymore, because Apple Music just got updates Yeah, constantly weeks getting ago. updated, so, yeah. So, yeah, it really has helped me a lot, because there's some really confusing things about Apple Music when it doesn't necessarily need to be as yeah. confusing. Well, and there's some pitfalls. You want to be careful. Uh, there's some things you don't want to do, because you might lose music, that kind of thing. Right. So. So, or it might think, actually not lose music, but think you've lost music. Yes. That's what happened to and Jim then, Dalrymple. Yeah. yeah, and that happens to me. I, may, I put all these playlists together of just streaming music, and then they didn't appear. And then I realized I wasn't showing, I was only showing the music that was downloaded, yeah. not the music that I hadn't put in my library. There's yet. a few rough edges, but, uh, so, but uh, this will help you work it yeah, out. Yeah, so um, everything you ever wanted to know about Apple Music and But we're more, afraid to ask. And we'll have the link in our show notes. Is it, it's uh, just, actually, if you, I'll, I'll tell you how to find it. If you search the iBook store for iMore, don't look for it. Serenity because it's just, it's under iMore staff. Okay. So search for iMore and you'll find it. And I think this is their first book, so. Apple Music, The yeah. Ultimate Guide. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what do you think about the Samsung debuting the ultimate test drive program? That you, if you have an iPhone, you can just test drive. You mean, but you have to give them your iPhone? Yes. You have to say, here's my iPhone, now may I test drive it? And How long can you test drive it? 30 days, I think. One month. Well, they got to do something, don't they? <laughs> uh, I actually have the Note 5, the new uh, Samsung, newest Samsung phone, and I really, really like it. It's a nice phone, great camera. They're finally catching up. But of course, Apple's got a new iPhone coming, and the rumors are that the new iPhone's camera is going to be even better than the existing camera. Wow. I mean, that would be pretty impressive, because right now, Samsung is, is just about neck and neck with the iPhone. Right. So, uh, you, can only, you know, they, they leapfrog each other, and mm -hmm. that's good for us. I would like to know if anybody has done this promotion. If you do this promotion, post on our subreddit or email me. Know. Like, I want to know if it made you switch or if it made you go back. I want to know your experience on, on that, if you did that test drive program. That's interesting. I, I, I get the feeling that people who use the iPhone are kind of all in on it. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of switchers. Do you? I don't know. I don't know of anyone that's gone backwards. Sometimes people say it's... Is it going backwards? Well, is that how you it. feel about that? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> They're kind of partial to what they uh, use. Sometimes people say, well, I don't want to rebuy all my apps. 
But the truth is most apps on Android are free. You Probably most of the apps you use even on the iPhone are mm -hmm. free. Um, there are a few games maybe that you paid for that you'd have to start over. Uh, but it's not going to cost you more than a hundred uh, bucks. And I don't know a ton of people that go from like the iPhone, the high-end iPhone to the high-end Samsung phone. They usually go to a I less think expensive? It's, yeah, it's a cost. Yeah. That's what I've yeah. It's just like I just don't need to pay this much money. And there are a lot of cheaper Android phones. They don't do as much, but... Well, one thing's for sure, the, the Samsung uh, phones are not cheaper than an iPhone. They're really no, expensive. They I paid uh, 830 bucks, I think, for that note from AT&T. It was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. All right. So, you know, this show would not be the same without viewers like you. We get lots of questions. We get email questions. We get questions on our subreddit. We get voicemails. I'm going to start with an email. This comes from Dawn Curry in Nova Scotia, Canada. She says, can you recommend mail apps that allow you to create groups on an iOS device. I rely on sending group emails, but not always on my desktop to create the group. Love the show. So my email app of choice is Outlook on my iPhone. You and really I love, love it. it. I do love it. I use it all the time. I love it that it syncs with the calendar. Uh, I love the way that it filters my emails out. And But I could not figure out a way to create a contact directly from Outlook, but what I did figure out how to do was do it from my contacts. Yeah, there are groups in contacts, aren't yes. there? Yeah. Well, yeah, so let's open the contacts. I made this news group. Um, let's see, here's it. I think everybody probably knows our email addresses. If Yeah, not. you could figure it out if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I made this group called News Team. So it's Mike, uh, Jason, and I, and then I just put the email addresses in there with the carrots, the greater than the less than sign, and separated by commas. Uh, and then it's a news team, so that's in my contacts. So now if I want to send an email, let's see. Then so I that's the key, really, is yeah, then it's create, the, team. create the groups. And I think you would want to do that anyway so that they persist beyond right. the email program. Yeah, then you're right? just in your, co yeah. So if you switch email programs as yeah. much as some people, so let's see. And uh, is there any negative, any reason why you might not want to use contacts to make a group? I, I can't think of one. So yeah, if you can just see here, if you want to show my screen, you see groups, then there it is, and then I can just send. So yeah, you can do that from your iPad or your iPhone, or you can do your contacts from here. I'm looking real quickly, because the power tool that I like for uh, email, and the one that does kind of so many things more than the Apple program is called Boxer, B-O-X-E-R, and I'm just looking to see in the feature list if it uh, supports uh, groups. It has, you know, things like canned responses, um, it does, of course, use uh, contact, so your method would certainly work here. I don't see groups per se, but Boxer is a great app. It's certainly worth uh, looking at. It's a very powerful app that has uh, things like puts your attachments, uh, you know, if you're worried about running out of space on your uh, iPad, puts your attachments on uh, Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, box.net. Uh, works with Evernote, has a built-in calendar. It's not as easy to use as the Apple program or as Outlook, uh, but it is for, for a lot of people, it's the heavy-duty version. And they have a light version that's free as well as a, a paid version. I should look maybe in the paid version, see if, if they have uh, if they Yeah, have I groups. tried Boxer. It's only it five was, bucks. It was fine. It's, 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 a, it's more tool-like, mm -hmm. less fun to use. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, uh, uh, people who use it love it, swear by it. I used it for a while, and you're right, I went actually went back the opposite direction. I went to Inbox, the mm -hmm. Google program, which is as simple, as dog simple as can be. Uh, Boxer has quick replies, a lot of things like that. I'm just looking to see if it has uh, groups, and I, I don't see that. This is the paid, the $5 version. Uh, profile pictures, canned responses, context integration. No, I think not. I think the, the sensible way to do it is just do it in context. Yeah. If you guys have another suggestion, we're all Always want to hear from you. Yep. Uh, okay, let's get another question. This one comes from Sophie. She's 12 years old. Hi, Sophie. And she's a big fan of Twit, especially iOS Today and i5. Nice. She's, she's a fan of yours is what it is. Yeah. And yours. You're on iOS she Today, says that too. that Leo Laporte guy should just shut up. <laughs> She says, recently while sorting through and deleting some applications, I saw an application called Hooks, which you went over oh, on an earlier episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get hooked on I, Hooks. <laughs> I know. It, I did recommend it a while to, ago to organize your uh, notifications. Oh, you're not talking about the game Hooks. No, Hooks. Oh, there's a great game well, called Hook. Okay. Don't Let's, get into that game. No, oh, this is different. No, hooks, hooks is a way to organize your notifications, oh. which has its own drawbacks, I think. Yeah. Uh, so she says, I was wondering if there are any equivalents, especially for apps such as Snapchat, YouTube, and Instagram. Currently, you can only get notifications if someone posts a hashtag or a specific person posts. 
So hooks, let's start with hooks. Hooks is a, um, is, you can get notifications for anything. It's kind of like IFFT, you know, so it's ah. like if there's someone lands, uh, if someone goes up in space, you can get an alert for that. Or if some, if there's a new Ho House of Cards episode, just, uh, or if there's pollen in the air. <laughs> um, really anything, you can really do that. But them. you have to configure it on the Hooks yes. app. Yes, so they have some and, but they don't, it's true that they don't have a lot for those apps that, um, she's 12, so my daughter's also 12, those are the apps that probably most 12 year old girls use. Yeah. Snapchat, YouTube, and Instagram. These are these are mainly for like techies. And uh, so with Instagram, I think I've shown this before that in Instagram you can just click the little three dots and be notified. There's quite a few someone... things like if somebody friends you, follows you, mentions you, puts your name in another post, things like that. Yeah, that's the best way. Right. For Instagram. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. And Facebook Snapchat, has similar stuff. I did consult my expert 12 year old at home, and what she said about Snapchat and YouTube is that sometimes she gets notifications, and sometimes she doesn't. So I think that it's kind of, I think it's one of those, you know, it depends on whether you're actually at your phone when the notification comes in. Uh, but the same thing, because she, uh, she Snapchats me things, and sometimes I get notifications and sometimes I don't. And with, with YouTube, you can get notifications if you subscribe to a channel. Right? Yes. You get emails, but then you can set up the email to notify you. Yeah, notifications are an interesting problem. They are. Yeah. I think Apple uh, probably wants it to be tied to an app as opposed to kind of a free floating notification. Uh, so YouTube, if you, so how come there's no YouTube in my, okay, so here's the YouTube notifications we can. So oh, oh, in the app you can uh, get notifications, so, sure that yeah. makes sense. So yeah. allow notifications and then that will be whatever you subscribe to, what notifications are those? It doesn't really say. And then you go into, it's a little bright, you're yeah, going to turn that down a little bit. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think you probably then have to go to the YouTube app and turn on notifications. Within the app? Within That's the where app, I, I would guess. The notifications are weird anyway because they appear just in settings. You can do notifications in the settings and you can also do it through settings notifications. But those are the same thing, right? <laughs> mm. uh, you know, this is one thing that kind of drives me crazy about iOS is that settings and notifications are extracted from the app. See, I always expect it to be in the app and they're in the general settings uh, pane, but then some stuff is still in the app. So that kind of bugs me. I think that's a bad way to do it, but that's how iOS does it. Now, see, I thought you were talking about Hook. No, this is Hooks. Um, I'll Have you seen the game Hook? Yes, before we get into the game, <laughs> let me show you what the Hooks, so you can go really But really, crazy. this game is great. Okay, yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> Talk. First, uh, earlier we were translating, um, put a meat cleaver in his head, and this it is was the great, part of I the need show. it. Um, yeah. Okay, so can you see my watch? So hooks can get really out of control. Like, I have this wow. new popular Reddit, uh, Apple post, and you just get them all over, all the time. Like, it, I, I have, whenever the next web tweets, I have a hooks. It wow. can really um, get overwhelming. So I would just be um, careful Especially what you're Especially if you time to the watch. You don't want your watch to be going off No, all the time. Seconds. So just yeah. be careful with hooks. Um, and, you know, like, I did do the notification whenever anyone goes in space, and recently, like, a week or two ago, when they Somebody did. Somebody went in space? Yes, and it notified me. So some things that are rare, it's good to be notified. Kind of things, fun. Like, every time the next web tweets, you probably don't want to be notified. No. And when you get to be a little older, you might have things like CNN and the New York Times notify you when there's breaking news on the stock market, mm -hmm. something like that. This yeah. is Hooks. Hook. Okay. Singular. You can just forget all about your notifications if you this play this is, game. You just, well, no, you'll need notifications if you start playing this game because you're never going to stop playing this game. Uh, the idea is you're going to push these black buttons, but you have to do it in order. See, if I push this button here, I can't retract that because of these in the way. So you've got to do it in the right order. You've got to retract them in the order that will facilitate you doing what you want to it to do and there it goes and then it's very set oh so close and yet mm, beautiful music too. it's a it's a it's one of those games that is it has it has beautiful soundtrack like it's going to relax you except it doesn't because mm -hmm. it's kind of frustrating is that game free uh First yeah i think free. so it's free but then the no no there's no there's no in-app perpetrator except purchases. for all the time you waste that is not yeah free. life is not free no yeah. This one's easy, right? Oh, you think it was easy, but now watch what they've done with that. Anyway, that's hook. That's hooks. hooks. I'm going to get hooks.
That looks great. Just, just be yeah, careful with it. Just like be that. careful. And thank you. Uh, is it Sophie, Sophie or Sophia? Sophie. 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 Yeah, thank you for watching for, the show. And if anybody else it. has a better way to get notified for Snap through Snapchat or YouTube, just email us at twit.tv uh, at <laughs> iOS Today at twit.tv. <laughs> or call us, 757-504-IPAD. And I think we also have a voicemail that we can play now. Hey, guys. Tom from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Tom. Um, as a visually impaired person, I'm uh, very much interested in accessibility. Um, I've been reading things from various sources online and um, different articles that talk about Apple TV having the uh, descriptive audio. Yeah. What uh, do you know about that, if anything? Thanks. Goodbye. Descriptive audio is great. So there is, of course... You know, when you're watching a TV show or a movie and, you don't, and you're blind, you can hear the people talking. But what you can't tell is what's happening in the show. You know, he sits down at a table, he goes through the door. Or, you know, the silent parts where he suddenly sees a meat cleaver in Leo's head. You don't know that. You hear his gasp, but you don't know why he's gasping. So descriptive audio is a nice feature where there's an actual narrator who says, and he walks in the door... And he sees a meat cleaver in Leo's head, and they time it just right, and that's the key. It's not like an audio, a, a transcription uh, that is done by a computer. It has to be done by a human being. It takes some time and effort, and generally it's the content company that does it. So, descriptive audio is available on Apple TV with something like Netflix, but it has to be that the company that made the content put the descriptive audio in, and then Netflix will play it back. The way but to not all of it. Not yeah, all, there was a everything. controversy, wasn't yes, there? You were telling in, me. Yeah, back in April when Daredevil first came out, uh, the Netflix show, it didn't have descriptive audio, and people were up in arms because, of course, the main character is it's a blind, blind, blind superhero. Yeah. So, but they, now it does. It does now. But not all the content, only their most popular content. Yeah. I think, so what you're going to have to do is find the descriptive uh, track. You can look in the Netflix settings, but there's a shortcut if you have the Apple TV. Press and while you're watching Daredevil or whatever you're watching on Netflix, press and hold the center button and then it will give you options. Now, you're going to need a sighted friend to do this, unfortunately, but you'll give you options. One of the options is to turn on the uh, descriptive audio track. So press and hold and then you can turn it on. So how is it different? How is descriptive audio different than voiceover? Like voiceover is an accessibility that's built so, into the phone and Apple TV. Right. So voiceover is an operating system level uh, adaptive technology that reads text that's on the screen. Oh, okay. So, so sign, for instance, remember I said you had to have a sighted friend help you with the settings? Uh -huh. if, you have, if you had voiceover on your Apple TV and you press and hold the center button, then voiceover would say, menu, and it would give you the commands, you know, turn on descriptive audio, turn off descriptive, it would give you this, the commands, and then you would know, and as you move around, a cursor around, or move the mouse around, and hover over different things or highlight different things, the talk, uh, voiceover would read those things to you. So that's a nice, that's an important feature, and I'm sure if you're a blind user, you already know about this. In the iPhone, the iPad, in Macintosh has it. Uh, on Windows, there's a similar technology. And people often use JAWS on Windows, which is a, a very expensive program that does exactly the same thing. They call them screen readers, but voiceover is a screen reader. And we don't really know what the next Apple TV, the new Apple TV, we don't know anything about. Nobody. We have a lot we, of rumors about time, and but we don't really know anything. We're even making up that there's a next Apple TV. We don't even know that because Apple doesn't say anything. Although I believe the rumors that we will, September 9th, we'll hear not only about new iPhones, maybe even about new iPads, maybe even, in fact, I think probably a new Apple TV as well. Do you think probably new iPads with stylus? You know, that's the interesting thing. Normally, September's iPhones, October is iPads. And so there's been some confusion. John Patchkowski at BuzzFeed, who is the guy who had the original story that Apple would announce these things on September 9th, said he that Apple will announce new iPhones and iPads on September 9th. So we don't know. This is rumors. It's all speculation. If I were going to continue the speculation, I would say, yeah, what we will see is there, there is at least one rumored new iPad, a new iPad mini, that it has the form factor and capabilities of the iPad Air 2, our current iPad. Uh, and then we know, or we think we know, that there's going to be an iPad Pro. If I were to speculate, I would say that will be a later announcement. So Apple will, if they're going to announce something, they're going to do a number of things in September. They might announce new iPad or iPads, probably an iPad Air 3, right? Um, but the iPad Pro is, I'm, I'm told, going to be delayed 
until later this year. So maybe they'll have an October announcement for the iPad Pro, a separate announcement. Remember, we're also going to hear about Watch OS 2.0. Mm -hmm. I think that will be September 9th. And iOS 9, the new uh, operating system for uh, iPhones and iPads, that'll also be September 9th. So there's a whole lot of stuff coming. Yeah. Generally speaking, Apple does these announcements for the iPhones uh, first week in September. Uh, when they announce something, it's usually available for pre-order the following Friday, so that'd be September 11th. And when you pre-order, you'll be pre-ordering for uh, the earliest ship date will be uh, September 18th, one week later that following Friday. So uh, that's kind of how it normally works, and, and there's no reason to think it won't work that way this year as right. well. Yeah, I'm going to be interested in the iPad Pro. I've been testing a Chromebook Flip. I don't want to be blasphemous, but... Um, I like There's it. a lot to be said for that. Is it touch? Yeah. Is it touch? touch? Yeah, so it flips over, and but it has the keyboard. Yeah. Um, and I can do almost everything that I can do with my laptop, um, aside from iTunes. Right. Yeah. On yeah. Right. No. I, and if you had Google Music instead of iTunes, you'd even be able to do that. I just stepped on there recording. You did. Yeah. That was for old times' sake. Yeah. So you'd feel comfortable. <laughs> right. If I did Google They've Music, but yeah, so progressed. I can't. You can do the same thing, but you can't. Yeah. You can't use iTunes, yeah. but it is. You could get music or you know get anything from the Google Play Store. It's, it's pretty amazing. You can even listen to uh, Audible books on uh, the Chromebook mm -hmm. now. So yeah, it's pretty amazing what you can do on those things. So yeah, did you I see? Think I mean, that's one of the news stories that uh, Chromebook sales have tripled in schools this year over last year, yeah. while iPad sales have started to decline. Except it's, in our school district. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> in our school district, it went the opposite. Yes. They had a two-for-one program, which means two, compu two, two students per Chromebook last year. Mm -hmm. This year, I guess they got a grant. They're now doing a one-to-one -one program right. with iPads. Yeah, and they're rolling them out today. Does, I think today is the day that they come home. Oh, that's they've exciting. They've been waiting patiently. How do, how do your boys like it? Uh, they don't know yet. They don't know yet. They've been eagerly anticipating it. Like they want it their was, having in their own yes, iPad. Yes, they want it in yeah. their own. But, you know, here's the thing that I think is interesting that I've struggled with as a parent with the iPad. Now that um, they're going to be expected to do their homework on it, um, my boys are so smart, a.k.a. sneaky, mm -hmm. that I'm not. I'm going to have to make sure they're actually doing their homework and not watching Minecraft videos on their iPad. Like, that's the thing that I'm most nervous about because it's just this device, everything's on it. It's the same way with me. Like, am I working or am I playing? You know, it's, I'm just as sneaky as my boys yeah. are. So that's the thing. It's like everything's it's in this device. preparing them for uh, adulthood. Right. Mm -hmm. Just think of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and so there is that way in the iPad or the iPhone. You know, you can triple uh, click it and then you can keep them in one app. Right. Pin it. Yep. Pin it. But then they, they know how to get out of that. They're so. not dumb. Yeah. So if they're little, you can triple click and then you go into, schools. you know, the um, accessibility and it'll keep them on one app. If your kids are little and they can't read yet, you can do that. But yeah, it will be a challenge. It's and a challenge for schools too. And I think there's two ways of approaching this. Some schools say no, no technology. Uh, you really? can't. Schools say that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not the high the school, way. Sonoma Academy, where your no husband technology. teaches. They have a one-to-one -one laptop program, but most teachers say close your laptop in class, and they block Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff on their on their school network. So that's one way of doing it, which is kind of I think putting your head in the sand and saying, well, we're going to pass this problem <laughs> down the line. I don't think they do that anymore. They, but I they hope don't, they, they stop. Um, I'm they not on the board there anymore. anymore. They don't have Macs anymore. No, but they, they, they stopped that a couple Windows. years ago. It was too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Or they. Yeah. They don't even have Chromebooks. They have yeah, Windows. Yeah. But they block Facebook and uh, YouTube because I think they feel like kids are going to do that. The problem is, of course, if they have phones, they're going to do it anyway. Right. So my my attitude is, well, it's a lot harder work, but I think it's not a bad idea to give kids technology. You know, I wouldn't start before fourth or fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Uh, Milo and uh, Huck in fifth, in grade. fifth grade, so it's but, perfect. But kin kindergarten is kindergarten is getting starts. an iPad. Mm -hmm. well. yeah. But then it's then the onus is on teachers and parents to educate. You know, uh, get, teach them time management. Teach them how not to get hooked right. on Facebook. To say, okay, there's a special time for that, and there's a time for homework. I That's a lot of that. work. Have we haven't that. learned it. Maybe we're not the best examples. <laughs> but in, if you think about it, they're going to face that at some point. Uh, where's the best time to teach them about it? And that's what school's about: right. is teaching you skills for coping with modern life and that's going to be a big skill how do you how do you manage your time how do you get work done when you have so many distractions mm -hmm. in your hand yeah what well, the google in the classroom versus apple in the classroom is really interesting and this morning tim debate. cook was on good morning america and some of the tech press immediately came out and said like a new program like apple has a new program they didn't have a new program he went on good morning america because google came out with a new google classroom program today so it was interesting because everyone was like look at this new apple program and it really i mean it's a great program that apple they have for education, but yeah. yeah but it's not new it's google's is new and they were trying to get out in front of that historically apple was always really good about putting max and even before max 
Cermak's Apple II's in schools. In fact, McNear School had Apple II's in the kindergarten until a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it really shocked me to see the kids playing Oregon Trail on a green and black screen. But uh, Apple was always very good about that. They kind of lost, they kind of lost their way for a while, and I think they're back, realizing that you get kids. Uh, hooked early, you get them uh, as Apple users early, they're going to be Apple users for life. And Google realizes that and Microsoft realizes that. You know, the big loser really in this is Microsoft Windows, which used mm -hmm. to be the dominant platform in schools yep. until last year. Mm -hmm. For the first time in the first half of uh, 2015, uh, Windows is actually now below, I think it's just now below Chromebooks for the first time ever. So that is a big shift. And, and th these companies understand this is so important. They yeah. got to get in there and mm -hmm. slug it out for the hearts and minds of yeah. these four-year-olds. Yeah, but there are, I mean, there are good programs. I was talking to my friend who's a reading specialist at um, my kid's school, and she says she has a, a program that plays back, you know, that has the yeah. kids read and plays back. Uh, and then she can email that file directly to through the iPad to the parent, right? which I think is great because if you've ever like been having a kid who struggled with reading, it's really difficult because sometimes they'll read at school, but they won't read at home. So if you're able to say, oh, yeah, they're reading, and then because half of that for me is just the anxiety you have that your kid's never going to learn to read. But wouldn't that be terrible time. if your kid never learned to read? It would be terrible. Yeah, yeah. It would be terrible. That's why um, we send them to school. That and to learn how to use Facebook. And if they didn't learn to read, they couldn't use my app cap. You ready for the is app cap? Is it time cap? for the hats? It is time for the app cap. We're going to do our app cap awards. This is where we wear funny hats in a way to celebrate the supremacy. <laughs> I'm going to start wearing this hat all the time yeah, just for that's safety. For, that's LA Search and Rescue. That's the real deal from Ventura Where'd County. Where'd we get this? From a Search and Rescue firefighter. Oh. He, I guess he didn't need it anymore. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> Maybe he was retiring. I got this from uh, an actual uh, jungle boat driver at Disneyland. He stole it right off his head? Yeah, he didn't seem to want it. Maybe it's because I knocked him out. Mm -hmm. No, he brought it to me here in the beautiful studio and said, you ought to have one of these. Oh, you ought to. Yeah. All right, now I'm safe. Now I can go um, rock climbing or what have you. Or... You know, if you've ever wanted to sing your messages, um, I have the app this for you. This is so cool. By the way, the thing I, what I really love about messages is the ability to send audio over your text messages. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy. You just swipe up and it sends it right away. And right. Sometimes you, don't, you want to do that, as Justin Timberlake points out in the Apple ad. Sometimes it's easier to say it than to spell it. It, it is true. Yeah. Well, uh, sometimes it's easier to have someone else sing it sometimes for you. Sometimes it's easier to sing it than um, to say it. So let's try this. So this is called Diddy. It's free. So um, D-I-T-T-Y. Every week they have a free single of the week. And if you choose that one, then you um, have to watch an ad. But Take not just in. on. So, I could just sing it for you. Leo. So you're going to send me music? Well, Let's see. As a Leo. text message? What? I'm gonna, you just have to be patient. What's going to happen, what? Megan? Uh, so here's the message what I up? need to... What are we having for lunch? Oh, that's a good question. This is a Monday. Is this going to come in on my messages? No, we're just going to look at it on my um, phone. Good. I mean, on my iPad. Good my... Okay, and then you just press play. And yeah. then the magic happens in a minute. It's creating my ditty. Is it a is it like a Leo? What are we having for lunch? What? It's singing. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> now. So now I could send this to you with the share button. I you can send it, send it to oh, you. Oh, you could send it as a text message. message. I can send, send it as a text message. I'd like to see what that looks like. Okay, let's hopefully. Do you have um, my uh, phone uh, in there? Oh, this is the iPad, so I don't. Oh, um, shoot. I would love to know. Is it going to be well, like that? Well, I can that? send it Facebook. Okay, send it Facebook Messenger. So then it will um, wow. bring up my Facebook contacts. That, and, and there I am right in the top mm -hmm. because I am number one when it comes to Megan's Facebook. Let me show you some of the ditties that I've made. Um, uh, let's see. Some of the good ones. Because you know, they're all kinds of... So here's one that I sent to my friend yesterday when she took Annabella, drove Annabella home late. Oh, my, that's awesome. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It is, it is the best app ever. Um, here's one that the kids will... I bet a 12-year-old Sophia would know what this means. Uh, 
know what that means. On fleek, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Eyebrows on fleek. On fleek. Are, um, you know. How did perfect. I learn that? I found out. Yeah, perfect. On fleek. I think Abby taught me that. That is a. Um, on fleek. That's it's yeah. not intuitive. Yeah. On fleek. So I have. Um, My eyebrows are I got a show. Uh, well, That's where I have a rap genius for, so I can understand right. what on fleek means. Let's do this one. Zombies. Does it choose the music? No, you get to choose. Should we show, go through this See, that's again? brilliant because uh, that was perfectly formed for the yes. meter. Yes, no, so you get to choose. Um, so this, whoa. Oh, it crashed. Come on, I Diddy. I hate it when Diddy does that. I hate it when Diddy does that. Diddy does that. That is the greatest app ever. Really, I'm getting that app right I now. I have amused, between the one that you I did. You win. I, I have amused, you just, because there's a lot of communication that, you know. You know, we should do a cage match for the app cap. One, two apps enter, only one emerge. Wait a minute, I think Jason's already doing that okay, for the so app arena. Let's see, so there's dub text, there's symphony number five. Da, 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 da. La donna really immobile. So these are all the free ones. Hallelujah. Are, My um, eyebrows are on fleek, on fleek, on fleek. And then see this nine, if you buy, you can do this for free, but, but you, those can't, are real songs. you can't share it. With so it. if you so, had Shia's yeah, so real let's chandelier. Let's do this one. Party rock. By so Ellen. we can enjoy it here, but if we wanted to send it to anyone, then that's how they make the money. It's an in-app purchase. Let's see, see, yeah, see how that looks with a real, a yeah. real thing. It's a real song. This yeah. is the best app ever. I thought you would. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just gonna buy it to do stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. It will improve your relationship with your friends and family. Um, it just. Diddy. It's all good. Diddy. D i t t y. Free in-app purchases. But I don't mind. That's good. Yeah, then you have that song. I would buy Party Rock. You would? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just put my name in it. Leo, Leo, Leo. I love it. Oh, I already Habanera. did this. Habanera. Yeah. Charge. Oh, this is a good That's one. good? Future. Oh, my gosh. iOS 2. Let's hear that. That's I want to. I got to hear that. This is good. This is our new theme song. Ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. We bring you the iOS Today singers and the new iOS Today theme song. Eos is not. So, Do they hire a lot of singers who are just waiting for you? Uh, probably, yeah. That's also, amazing. you know, I tried to put a phone number in there, and it does. It'll read it. It is like you know, seven thousand six hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. So, not perfect, That's but awesome. Close mm -hmm. to the perfect app. What cap. do you have? I am so chagrined. I thought mine was really great until I saw that. Oh. Not too late to change. So, do you ever read the uh, the New York Times? I do. Great, I do. great cooking section. In fact, I have all the New York Times cookbooks, the original by Craig Claiborne, and then there's a new one that just came out, and it, uh, I can't remember her name, but I follow her on Twitter, and it's it's great. They have great recipes. Uh, well, the New York Times has decided, in their infinite wisdom, to offer an archive of seventeen thousand recipes from the New York Times, Ooh. free. Free? Free. It's called New York Times Cooking. It just came out oh. uh, this weekend. And uh, first of all, let's start with the editor's collections because these Melissa are... Clark, is that who you were talking about? Uh, no, who is it? Amanda Hesser. Oh. Uh, so that's the... Uh, she wrote the, the new New York Times cookbook. So editors are putting together collections. Yes, you can have eggs for dinner. Ooh. Poached eggs with mint and yogurt, eggs poached in marinara, kimchi omelets with sriracha sauce, polenta with parmesan, and olive fried eggs. These are straight out of the New York Times, and they haven't just dumped these out. They have scans. This is, they've actually entered it, and they've got pictures and recipes like this, quick recipes from the author. This is awesome. You can search, of course, but I have to say, I, this is 17,000 recipes, and these aren't, you know, you can go online and get, you know, hundreds of thousands of recipes. We've talked about Big Oven, which has probably that many. Mm -hmm. But but these are by the editors of New York Times. These are tested, tried, and true. Things you should make, not buy. Classic marinara sauce, chocolate chip cookies, mustard shallot vinaigrette, Magnolia Bakery's cupcakes. These you should make. You should make your ketchup. Make your, your own, ketchup. own tomato ketchup. Oh, that sounds exhausting. Well, <laughs> then this might not be for you. How about Katherine Hepburn's brownies? Mm. The brownies, the brownies. <laughs> Quick, Norman, they're burning. Nice. 
Uh, Watermelon Popsicles by Mark Bittman. We love Ooh. Mark Bittman, right? Yeah, I do like Mark Bittman. Yeah, he's really he's good because he's this not is... a vegetarian, but he does a lot of yeah. stuff with vegetables. Cut the watermelon into small chunks, discarding the right, put them in a blender with sugar and lime juice. Pro I see, I wouldn't have thought about the lime juice. Process till smooth, adding enough water, and then pour into popsicle molds and freeze. Now, that is a simple, that is a simple recipe. Yeah. He Even you could do. I do. Mark Bittman is, I think, my favorite. I love Mark he Bittman. He doesn't try to be complicated. So everybody who's ever done a recipe for the New York Times is in here. They even I have love this. They have a Julia Child collection uh, because, uh, I mean, the, the editor's collections are really, you know, if you like Edna Lewis or uh, Nigella, Nigella. But here's Cooking with Julia okay. Child. These are, uh, these are Julia Child. Julia Child's caramel custard. This is a delicious custard you love to prepare. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was only a matter yeah. of time before we yeah. got the Julia Child. Julia Child. I just, I'm going to download this right now. Isn't that awesome? It's free. So I love yours and you love mine. Yeah. And mine was called Diddy, someone. It is. There's an iPhone app and an iPad app. D-I-T-T-Y. No Apple I Watch I think you should app. get both of these. And uh, now the New York Times cooking just came out. If you are a New York Times subscriber, you can log into the New York Times account, and that'll let you save recipes. Oh. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you, you mean, you know, I... That's I like having this kind of stuff on my uh, iPhone do you, because I go to the store and I'm thinking, what I what do I, I never plan ahead. Yes. You know, I should. I, you should sit down. You should make the mm -hmm. meal plan for the week. Put the list together. Go shopping. But I don't do that. I get to the store and go, now what? And so it's nice to have on your phone to have all these great things: pork cutlets with paprika sauce. Some of these are quite old. You know, the styles in eating have changed. We don't, we probably don't do pork cutlets as much as we used we to. We don't. Because they're heavy, but they're delicious. So you're going to get some of the older recipes uh, as well. Did I mention some of them have video? Mm. Some of them have video. So that makes it even more fun. They've, I, uh, kudos to the New York Times. They also show you notes from other people. So um, that's kind of cool. You can see people's comments about, hey, don't thaw the frozen fruit things like that, uh, that really are helpful as well. It's really a community. Uh, I love this. So there you go. New York Times Kitchen, brand new, uh, I'm sorry, cooking, brand new, just came out, and 17,000 recipes. That's yeah. just amazing. You can find the link uh, at twit.tv slash iOS, um, or just search for New York Times cooking, and that's how I just found it when I yeah, was searching it wasn't the hard store. to find. was not hard to In find. In fact, if you search for New York Times, they have a lot of apps, including, of course, the news apps, the quick apps, and then they also have crossword puzzles. I, I use them all. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah. And because I I get the Sunday Times, so I sign in my account, and right. I get a lot all the features as well. But that's nice because you can still get a lot of good features even if you don't sign up. Yeah. But right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just for saving. Because I sign up, I uh, log into your account, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do, huh? <laughs> No, actually, I used okay. to, but then I just got my own account. I still get the uh, Sunday Times just so I get the digital stuff. Oh, that's good. And it's nice on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. You're having uh, your brunch. Mm -hmm. You open up the paper, do the crossword, Yep. read a few stories. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's it for this edition Don't take of that I helmet today. off. You okay. can't take the helmet off until you play me one more ditty. One more ditty, okay. One, una mas mm -hmm. ditty. We do this show every Monday right after Triangulation. That's about 1 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 2000 UTC on twit.tv. You can watch us live or get on-demand versions after the fact. Twit.tv slash iOS. Triangula uh, triangulation. Uh, YouTube.com. What is it? YouTube.com slash... What's iOS? our channel? iOS Today? Probably is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, of course, if you subscribe, like... Uli does. Mm -hmm. You'll get every uh, episode automatically in your inbox in your podcast app. Just search for Twit. We've got a lot of good shows, including on iOS. There is a limit to what you can write, just so you know, but I did not reach it. You ready for this? Yes, this let's hear it. Your final one. Your final ditty. Final ditty. -ditty. Megan Maroney on Tech News Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you left out the it. No, I did. Yeah. I Thanks. Knows all as I left out the s. No, you left out the it. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS, iOS today. today. Bye. See, you thought the negative. You went negative. I am. Uh, I'm a, I've learned my self-deprecation.
That's the best app ever. It might be. It is the best app ever.